Settings and sharing in Notion can be very overwhelming. There's a share button in the upper right hand corner, yet sharing abilities in the settings menu, multiple ways to invite people to your workspace via links, and what the heck is the difference between team spaces and groups? If you're like me, settings and sharing in Notion is one of the hardest things to understand in Notion. I've really struggled with it this for months. Thankfully, Notion recently launched one of their new certifications, the setting and sharing badge certification. That kind of forced me to understand settings and sharing more effectively and proved to myself that I actually knew what I was doing when it comes to sharing in Notion. I'm happy to say after taking it one time and studying for about 30 minutes that I passed with flying colors, a very different experience than the Notion Essentials badge exam. If you want an overview of that, you can check out my other video on that. I'll put a link to it in the description. With all that in mind, let's cover the basics of settings and sharing in Notion in this video. I'm not gonna go in depth on everything, but this should cover the basics of it all. To help keep it organized, I broke into this video down into three sections, sharing a page, team spaces and groups, and settings and members. Let's get started with one of the most confusing parts of Notion at times, sharing a page. Sharing a page in Notion can be very simple at times, and at other times, decently complicated. I'm gonna start simple and get more complicated as we go here. Let's say you have a basic page in Notion with no linked databases and you just wanna share it with people to comment or edit on it like a Google Doc. It's a basic text page in Notion that you own in your personal workspace. To share it, you'd go to the upper right-hand corner, select share, and there's two different ways to share this page. The first way would be able to share the page via email and enter all the emails that you want to share this page with. When people receive this email and open it up, they have access to this page as a guest. As a guest, you, the workspace owner, can select what permission level they have on this page. This is very similar to Google Docs. The second way is similar to Google Docs too, and then you can just share the page to people as a link. All you have to do is toggle on the share to web and then alter the settings as you want. You'll see allow duplicate as a template, which is automatically toggled on, allow editing and comments, which requires people who edit or leave comments to have a Notion account, and search engine indexing, which allows Google or any other search engine to find your Notion page. One cool new feature in these settings that Notion just released that isn't similar to Google Docs is the expiration date. You can now set when a shareable link expires for guests to have access to it. This could be helpful if you have a key deadline and want to lock a page right at that deadline no need for you to turn off the link at that deadline manually. That's pretty sweet. The manual option could also just look like you removing them as a guest from that page. You can always remove people from a page if you are the workspace owner. If you give someone full access to a page, they can share the page with others and add people as guests. One tricky part to Notion is the differences between guests and members. When you share a page in Notion, they're automatically added as a guest, not a member, unless they have an allowed domain. More on that later. Members are important because these are paid accounts to Notion. If you're paying for Notion, you can have unlimited guests to a page or workspace. If you're not paying for it, you can only have five guests to your entire workspace. Notion's personal pro plan is only $5 a month, and it's free if you have a .edu email address. The last thing to keep in mind when sharing pages is if you have any subpages. Subpages take on these same properties as the parent page. So if you have subpages in that page, everything will share nicely. However, if you have a page that you are linking to from a different page that isn't shared with a guest, the guest you, sh you share the page with won't be able to see the linked page unless they have access. This is especially crucial if you have templates in Notion. So those are the two main ways to share a page, especially when it comes to a workspace. Let's move on to talking about settings and sharing when it comes to members, groups, and team spaces. Groups and team spaces can be pretty confusing, especially because team spaces are relatively new to Notion. You can think of team spaces as a workspace within a workspace. You can think of groups as the same level of permission. Team spaces and groups are not the same thing. They do work really nicely together though. Team spaces are kind of like many workspaces in a single workspace. This is really helpful for larger organizations where there's many different teams. You can have a team space for engineering and another for marketing. Everyone in those teams can then be part of those team spaces and at least see what's going on in that team space. Where groups are helpful is subdividing a team in a team space or an overall workspace. For example, you could have senior leadership as a group 
and then another group of product managers. Instead of adding each of these members individually and changing their permissions individually, groups allow you to mass change permissions and access. So you could have senior leadership in a team space have the ability to edit all of the pages, while product managers could edit most pages, but other company pages, they could only be viewable to them. If you add a team member, you could just add them to the right group rather than trying to figure out all the right permissions each time. For team spaces, there are three different types of team spaces, open, closed, and private. Open team spaces are open to everyone who is a member of a workspace. Closed are workspaces not available to everyone, but everyone at least knows they exist. And private team spaces are closed, but not everyone knows they exist. Team spaces are pretty powerful no matter what team plan you are on. But a lot of the value seems to be if you are an enterprise customer. You have team spaces in both team pricing plans and Notion, but there's a lot more in the enterprise plan. This makes sense as Notion is probably trying to entice more and more customers to be enterprise customers. Some of the most significant features included only in the enterprise plan are single sign-on, the ability to have a membership admin, private team spaces, and advanced security controls like having the ability to disable guests or exports of information from Notion. Let's now move on to the last section in left-hand side of Notion, settings and members. When you click on the settings and members tab in Notion, there's three main areas to keep an eye out on when it comes to sharing and settings. Settings, team spaces, and members. In settings, you can create a custom domain such as mattgyra.notion.site. You can set up allow domains where if someone with a particular email domain as their email signs up to your workspace, they're automatically added as a member. So in theory, I could have anyone sign up to my own workspace if they have matthewgyra.com as their email domain. You can set a public homepage, and more importantly, if you ever want information out of Notion, you can export content into Markdown and CSV, HTML, or into a PDF if on Enterprise. That would be all of your content in the workspace. If you need to export a single page as a PDF, you can do that just by going to the upper right-hand corner and clicking on the three dots, then selecting Export. You don't need the enterprise plan for a single page into a PDF. Back in settings and members, in team spaces, you can set default team spaces, manage all of your team spaces, and limit how team spaces are created in your workspace. Nothing too complicated here. Members are pretty simple too, as you can create an invite link for new team members, add members via email, and manage groups. Pretty simple. So there are definitely aspects of settings and sharing in Notion that are simple. The settings and members part of Notion are a great example of that. Sharing pages in Notion can be pretty simple, but can also get complicated if you have linked pages or databases. If you're looking to get your Notion settings and sharing badge though, this exam is definitely more simple than the Notion Essentials exam. If you're using Notion with a team already, the exam will be probably pretty easy. If you're only using it for individual use, study a little bit, but nothing extravagant. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a like, and if you're looking for other videos like this one, you can check out others on this channel, like this one, here.